Ladies and gentlemen, it happened again. In an unexpected turn of events, here we are. Havoc Demon Hunter got another set, another round of changes, and these ones are even more incredible than the last ones from last week. Last week, they came in right before I was about to leave on vacation, and tonight, they came in right as I was about to go to sleep. So, we're going to look at all of these changes today, and I just want to tell you guys right now, these look absolutely insane. Some of the new abilities, some of the new talents we're getting are just nuts. There are so many cool things happening here. So we're going to look through the patch notes. We'll go through it one by one. We're going to read through them first. Then we're going to hop back into the game here. We'll take a look at the talent tree and I'll demonstrate some of these new talents for you like I did in the last video. Um, we actually have access to some of them that weren't working previously so we can test them out. I can show you how they work. Um, we have empty talent spots that were like not accessible last week that they're now filled with things. There's a lot to there's a lot to cover. OK, uh, let's dive right into it. OK, just before we hop into it, I want to ask you guys one major favor. If you could do me a solid and make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. This is the best time where, you know, people are going to be coming to this channel to find out new information on Havoc because we're actually getting changes. We're actually getting love and attention and care. So if you are not subscribed yet, please go and subscribe to this channel so you can get updated on all of the new videos that will be coming out. I will, I'll be putting out a lot of videos. I'm going to be blunt with you guys. It might even be to the point where you get sick of them. But hey, this is what you're here for, right? You're here to learn. You're here to get excited about the game, excited about the class again. So make sure you sub to the channel. And yeah, let's dive into these new talents. Okay, so Demon Hunter. These changes came in tonight. Uh, the first one is crossed out. So you can see Spectral Sight cooldown is now 1 minute 30 seconds, was 1 minute 30 with rank 2. Ignore this. Spectral Sight cooldown reduced to 30 seconds, was 1 minute and 30 seconds, and haste now affects its global cooldown. So this doesn't mean that the ability itself is hasted. What this means is that when you press the button, there's a cooldown time before you can press another button after it, right? That is the GCD. So that GCD after you press Spectral Sight is now affected by haste. It wasn't previously, and that's what made it feel really clunky and really bad to press. So I'll show you this later on, but Spectral Sight doesn't feel that bad to press anymore. Uh, I'll show you that later, but let's keep reading. Demonic's duration for demon form reduced to five seconds, was six seconds. Again, this is okay. It's less time spent in demon form I explained this last time. Less time spent in demon form, it means that the, the whole spec doesn't need to be balanced around being in demon form all the time. Yes, it is fun to be in demon form, but it's also more fun to be in demon form and feel like you're doing something impactful, not just staying there for the whole fight and it's just what you do, right? So less time spent in there means that they can put more power into it for the time that we do spend in it and it'll just feel a little better. Uh, Lysian Decree has been moved to the Demon Hunter class tree. Um, this is, you know, a lot of people are excited to see this. I will warn you that it is a capstone now. and You do have to go down a certain path to get a Lysian Decree. This isn't just a free new button you're going to get. You do have to sort of commit and uh, invest some points to get it. But hey, it, it might work. There might be a, a world where we take this. Fodder to the Flame has been moved to the Demon Hunter class tree. Again, this is great to see. A lot of people are excited to see this. There is a caveat. And that caveat is that Fodder to the Flame is now on a choice node. So this choice node is Fodder or Collective Anguish. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit further. So Fodder to the Flame now increases Spectral Sight cooldown by 30 seconds, in addition to previous to the previous effect. So without Fodder to the Flame, the Spectral Sight cooldown is 30 seconds. When you take Fodder to the Flame, the Spectral Sight cooldown goes up to goes up by 30 seconds. So effectively, your fodder is now an on-demand, no RNG, one minute cooldown. It's not one minute 30 anymore. It's not RNG, like anywhere between one minute and two minutes. No, this is a one minute cooldown. And this is good because when it's a one minute cooldown, that means you can pretty easily and effectively line it up with other things. You can line it up with meta. So every meta, you know that you're going to have a fodder demon. So very cool, very cool. Um, the hunt's initial damage increased by 22% and damage over time increased by 30%. So I told you guys, I told you, they were going to buff the hunt to make the four piece of the new tier set just make a bit more sense, right? And that's exactly what they did here. It wasn't in the first build, but I told you it was coming. So here it is. They did also tonight, they buffed the tier bonuses, the two piece and the four piece. We'll go over that in a bit, but I'm I'm telling you guys, this is crazy. It's It's nuts. The changes they made to our tier bonus is nuts. But we'll get there. Sigil of Flame now moved to Demon Hunter baseline. 
So you don't have to talent into Sigil of Flame. You just have it. You have it naturally. It's in your spell book. You just take it, put it on your bars, ready to go. Sigil of Flame, initial damage increased by 200%. So when you put Sigil of Flame down and it explodes, it does an initial burst of damage and then there's a dot. So that initial burst of damage has now been increased by 200%. Pretty big. Okay, new talent, Live by the Glaive. When you parry an attack or have one of your attacks parried, restore 2% of max health and 10 fury. This effect may occur once every five seconds. This does kind of seem like, kind of seems like a tank talent, right? There might be some situations where you want to take this as Havoc. I don't know if you guys played Shadowlands or even if you've played this, uh, this expansion. When you're fighting a mob who is able to parry you and you know you rush in there on your opener you're banking on something like your demons blade demon blades to hit it and generate some fury for you but that demon blades hit gets parried and you have no fury and you're stuck there and you can't even do your opener this can actually help with that i think this is a, a weird band-aid fix for the problem i don't think parry should be in the game to begin with I think that should just be what they should be focusing on. You know, fix that. For now, I think this is a, a good way for us to sort of just bypass that problem. I don't know what the uh, compromise is going to be, like what you're going to have to not take to be able to take this instead. But hey, at least we have something here. Unnatural Malice, Relentless Pursuit, Extended Sigils, and Misery in Defeat have been removed. So these were the two modifiers for the hunt. Extended Sigils was another talent in the class tree, and then Misery in Defeat is gone. I'm so happy to see Misery and Defeat go. Now, Sigil of Misery is still in the class tree. You can still spec into it, but Misery and Defeat is gone. So Misery and Defeat was the talent you would take that would essentially make any um, enemy hit by your Sigil of Misery take increased damage for a couple seconds. Um, and this really changed the way we used Sigil of Misery because it now became a damage ability instead of, uh, you know, something you would use for utility to actually stop casts or to stun things. You were then just throwing it on cooldown to be able to do more damage. So really glad that this is gone. I'm looking forward to be able to use Sigil of Misery as it is or was intended. Unrestrained Fury is now a one talent, one rank talent was two and increases max fury by 20, was 10, 20. So we're just putting one point into it now and we're getting as much uh, increase to our max fury as we were before. Shattered Restoration is now a one rank talent, was two and increases Shattered Soul Healing by 10, was five and 10. So again, the same situation getting the max amount of it for one point instead of two. Illidari Knowledge is now a one rank talent, was two, and reduces magic damage by 5%, was three and six. So we're losing 1% uh, magic damage reduction, but hey, for to sacrifice one point to get it, I think that's okay. Um, Will of the Illidari is now a one rank talent, was two, and increases max health by 5%, was three and six. Same deal. Rush of Chaos is now a two rank talent, was one, and reduces Metamorphosis cooldown by 30 and 60 seconds, was 60, uh, 60 seconds. Previously, this was a one point uh, investment to get a minute off of your meta. So now it's a two point investment to get one minute off instead. So uh, Quicken Sigils no longer reduces the cooldown of Sigil skills. Um, Erratic Fellheart now reduces the cooldown of Fell Rush and Infernal Strike by 8% and 15%, was 10 and 20. Flames of Fury has been adjusted. Now a two rank talent was one. Sigil of Flame deals 30 and 70% increased damage and generates one and two f uh, fury per target was two. This is big. This is big. This isn't, if you take this talent, this is an extra 70% on top of the, what was it? 200% increased initial damage on Sigil of Flame. It's doing a lot of damage now. It's doing a lot of damage. Um, let's look at the Havoc stuff. So Dancing with Fate is now a one rank, was two. This is crossed out. Uh, Blind Fury now increases Blade Dance's final slash. This has been reverted. I don't know what this is trying to say, but we'll look at the talent tree in a second. Uh, new talent, Demon Hide. Increases magical damage dealt by 5% and reduces physical damage taken by 5%. We take a lot of physical damage now. We just, we, we take so much damage. It, it's insane. And all we really have to, to work against it is Blur. And Blur got nerfed, not, not recently, but a while ago. So we're pretty squishy now. So having an increased um, physical damage reduction taken by 5%, that's huge. And this increases magical damage dealt by 5%. This is insanely powerful. So magical damage consists of anything that's not physical. All of our chaos damage, 5%. Uh, all of our fire damage, 5%. Nature damage from the hunt, if it's not being converted into chaos already through AMN, nature damage is magic damage. Um, so this is this is big. This is important because it's not just a one-to-one -one conversion. Like you're not just buffing it by 5%. Because the thing is, when you buff something like Immolation Aura, 
by 5%. That extra 5% damage is then being fed into Growing Inferno, and it's even being multiplied further by uh, Burning Wound. And then that is being fed into Rage Fire, which is then, you know, getting amplified and exploding on multiple mobs. So this is a big deal to have just across the board increases magical damage by 5%. New talent, Dash of Chaos. For two seconds after using Felrush, activating it again will dash back towards your initial location. So I'll demonstrate this in game again after we're done reading this. This is this actually works a lot smoother than I initially thought it would. I thought it would be a little bit janky. I wasn't sure if it was going to turn your camera for you or what was going to happen, but it's actually pretty pretty cool. I'll, I'll show it to you guys soon. A new talent, Scars of Suffering, increases versatility by 4% and reduces threat generated by 8%. So the, the threat generation, you know, it, it's it's minor. It's something. Um, sometimes it does feel like we need reduced threat. But the bigger thing here is increases versatility by 4%. This is massive. This is insane value. Um, to put one point into this and you just automatically get 4% increased damage and uh, damage reduction with your verse. This is going to be a lock-in talent in uh, higher keys because, you know, the higher you go in keys, the more there is the potential to get one shot. So you start stacking verse just to get a free 4% is insane. So honestly, Scars of Suffering and I think even Demon Hide, those are both going to be lock-in talents no matter what build you play. Now this one, this one is fun. It's overpowered, but it's fun. Chaotic Disposition. Each time you deal chaos damage, there is a 7.77% chance to duplicate 33% of the damage up to 3 or 7 total times to rank talent. So when this is saying each time you deal chaos damage, it doesn't mean each time you press an ability that does chaos damage. It means each time you see uh, a, a combat text pop up on your screen that you did damage to something that was chaos. So for example, when you I-beam something, when you I-beam a pack of mobs, when you I-beam 10 mobs, each time that those 10 mobs take one tick of damage, each of those individual ticks has a 7.77 chance to duplicate 33% of that damage. It's crazy, it's crazy. So I-beam, Immolation Aura, your Soul Ren dots, there's so much. The, the Hunt dot, if it's getting converted through AMN, it's wild. This thing is cranking. This is doing so much damage. And it's just, it's all passive. Um, I, I do suspect that it's going to get nerfed maybe just a little bit. It is, it seems to be a little overpowered. But uh, again, I'll, I'll show it to you in practice and we'll see what you guys think. Um, I beam damage increased by 15%. Just a flat increase to your I beam damage. Nice. Fel barrage damage increased by 100%. So remember last time we were talking about Fel Barrage, how it felt a little weak, you couldn't really extend it. The only way you can get maybe a few seconds of extension was through Blind Fury, and it just wasn't doing as much damage as you might have thought it would. Uh, but here, now they increased it by 100%. Pretty, pretty big. Pretty big. Um, Isolated Prey now causes Immolation Aura to always critical strike. Was 30% increased damage. And this is, this is good, man. This is good. You take this uh, combined with Know Your Enemy. So no, your enemy is giving you not just increased crit chance, but increased crit damage based on your crit chance. So Immolation Aura is just going to be doing a shit ton of damage because it's, it's always critting. And then you're combining it with like Burning Wound and Growing Inferno. Big damn, big damn. Now this one's big too. This, this one is, this is a big change. Throw Glaive now triggers Cycle of Hatred's effect when Furious Throws is selected. So if you take Furious Throws, now Throw Glaive contributes to Cycle of Hatred along with, you know, your Chaos Strikes and your, your Blade Dances and your Glaive Tempest. Now you get Throw Glaive in there too. And there's there's a, a synergy here with our tier set that, again, we will get to. I'm, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself here. Soul Rend is now a one rank talent, was two, and causes 100% of damage to be dealt over time as Chaos. Was 60 and 120. So instead of spending two points to get 120, you're spending one point to get 100. Pretty good compromise. Shattered Destiny now increases Demon Form duration per 10 Fury spent was 8. So again, just kind of, uh, you know, ironing out the, the the kinks of how being in Demon Form works. Again, this is just a, a healthier change to make it all seem a bit more um, fluid and impactful. So now there's some Vengeance changes, and this is not a Vengeance channel yet, so we won't go over those. But let's swap over here. Let's take a look at the changes to the tier set. So this is a blue post on the forums, on the feedback forums. Uh, many have enjoyed Throw Glaive as a rotational spender at some point during Dragonflight, but I can certainly understand tension around this concept among those who do not prefer it, especially considering the tier set heavily encourages taking Throw Glaive bonuses. Right, because our two pieces oriented around Throw Glaive, 
it only makes sense to take the third wave talents to work synergistically with it, right? We also recognize the tier set bonuses are quite weak from a tuning perspective. As a result, we'll be looking to make adjustments that both raise the bonuses to intended levels of damage contribution, as well as make a, hopefully, meaningful concession on the rotational requirement for extracting value from them. So the two-piece. Blade Dance automatically triggers Throw Glaive on your primary target, and each slash has a 50% chance to Throw Glaive an enemy for 35% damage. So what this means is every time you press Blade Dance, you are guaranteed to throw one Throw Glaive on your primary target. And then from there, each slash has a 50% chance to throw a Glaive at a random enemy, or one that you're in combat with, and probably in range, for 35% damage. So now the four piece, Throw Glaive reduces the remaining cooldown of the hunt by two seconds, and the hunt's damage over time effect lasts six seconds longer. So previously, this was, it would, was reducing the cooldown by 0.4 seconds. So this is a big increase gone from 0.4 to 2 seconds. And the hunt's damage over time effect lasts 8 seconds longer. Used to be, I think, 5 seconds longer, 4 seconds longer, now it's 6 seconds. So there's some nuances to how these new changes work. We'll read a little bit further here. The two sets initial full power automatically triggered throw glaive will consume a charge of your throw glaive skill, which you should have two of, and thus requires that a charge is available in order to trigger. This will drastically reduce the need to manually cast throw glaive rotationally but without denying it completely. For example, in circumstances where you're out of melee range or you find yourself with an extra charge, the additional partial damage throw glaive procs will continue to behave in the same way they do now. Some things to note about this. So for the two piece, it now consumes a charge of throw glaive to throw a full damage glaive on your primary target as an additional effect. These procs, the, the initial throw glaive that's being procced from Blade Dance to your primary target does not cost any fury, but it essentially acts as if you threw it yourself. Meaning, they count towards Cycle of Hatred, but they do not count towards Shattered Destiny, for example, because you're not spending fury on that throw glaive. It's being cast out for free, but it is consuming a charge of your two throw glaive charges that you have, and it's feeding into cycle of hatred now of course those glaives all of them will still be feeding into things like soul rend um, they'll be feeding into things like furious throws so they're getting duplicated uh, there's a lot of synergy there there's a lot of stuff going on now the four piece the four sets cooldown reduction will be applied once from each throw glaive cast or proc and will not be affected by the total number of glaives thrown per cast or number of targets hit we expect the tuning value of the above changes to be significantly closer to intended targets and we will continue to evaluate and more tightly tune the bonuses and related skills as we move forward. So about the four piece, like I said, the CDR is increased to two seconds from 0.4 seconds. The hunt dot effect extension went up from uh, four seconds to six seconds. Um, no longer interacts with furious throws. Basically duplicated throw glaives that you're getting from furious throws don't interact with this, but the ones that you're getting from the two piece do also act towards the four piece. So essentially, if you get really lucky with your procs, you can get a, a up to like a 10 second cooldown reduction on the hunt with one blade dance press. You press blade dance once, you could potentially reduce the hunt's cooldown by up to 10 seconds. Okay, so we're in game here. This is what the new tree looks like. Um, there has been some shuffling around. There's been some new additions. There's been things put back into place, swapped around, whatever. So. First, let's look at the class tree. As you can see, Sigil of Flame is no longer there. Sigil of Misery is right at the top. You can get that um, with very little investment. Improved Sigil of Misery is still there, but Sigil, uh, sorry, Misery and Defeat is gone. Uh, we come down here. This all kind of looks the same. One thing to note is that Fellblade and Aura of Pain are now separated. They used to be a choice node where you had to choose either Fellblade or Aura of Pain, but now you can get both pretty easily. And Aura of Pain goes right into things like if you're going into the uh, immol the Immolation Aura Talents on the right. If you're taking Chaotic Disposition, it works for that too. Um, a Fire Inside. Again, we're going to look at all these soon. But yeah, this is great. You can get both of them. Very cool. Um, we have we have that new talent over here, Live by the Glaive. This is the, the parry one. And if we go all the way down here to the left side, you'll see this new choice node where we have Collective Anguish and Fodder to the Flame. I don't think Collective Anguish, Anguish will see much use now, 
just because fodder to the flame is so easy. It's a one minute cooldown. You can line it up with everything. It doesn't feel that bad to press anymore. I think we're going to be taking fodder. Even the demon dies easily now. It just It's going to die from either the random throw glaives that are just blasting out of you at all times or the eye beams that you're slamming out there. Yeah, so you don't even really have to like pay attention to the demon and you don't have to chase our, chase around the, the demon soul uh, as soon as you kill the demon you just you get the buff so i'll actually go in here and i'll just show you uh we'll start fighting so i'll press my button there it is and you can see it just it's, it's dead barely had to do anything honestly i i think fodder is going to be the play now it sucks that we're losing the healing and the uncapped damage from Feldev, but I think it'll be worth it. So now we go over here, we see Rush of Chaos. This is the new two-point uh, talent where we reduce the cooldown of meta by 60 seconds. Then we have the Hunt down here on its own with no modifier talents below it. And then we go over this way. You're going to see something pretty cool. This is Flames of Fury. So this is that talent we saw in the list where you can increase Sigil of Flames damage by 70% and generate two additional fury per target hit. This is going to be pretty good in AoE. And here's Elysian Decree. So you can see where this is kind of a problem, right? We have three capstones down here. You kind of always want to take the hunt. Uh, fodder is kind of just too good to give up. Then we have Elysian Decree. It's it, it, it's iffy. Like personally for me, I never really loved Elysian Decree. I know a lot of people did. There might be a way to take it, um, but I'm not completely sure. But it's there. And uh, maybe somebody smarter than me will find a way to be able to, to, to take that. So that's the class tree. A lot of good changes here. I really like everything that's happening here. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. Now the fun stuff. So let's come over to the spec tree. So first and foremost, you'll notice that these two slots here were previously completely empty. They had the little bunny uh, icon there with nothing in them. Start with the right one. Demon hide. Magical damage increased by 5% and physical damage taken reduced by 5 Like I said, this is a lock-in. This is so good. You're always going to take this. Amazing talent. Now this one is a choice node. So you can take Improved Fell Rush, the Improved Fell Rush we all know and hate, or you can take Dash of Chaos. So this is the one that says for two seconds after using Fell Rush, activating it again will dash back towards your initial location. So let me demonstrate that for you here let's see what can i give up here do that and just for the demonstration i want to show you guys something okay you might have a lot of questions about how this works does it turn your camera does your dash backwards do damage does it proc momentum uh well yes yes it does so uh you can see my buffs are right here this is my i've Increase the size of my buff window so you can see things, you can track it a bit more easily. So I'm going to Fell Rush, and then within two seconds, I have a two second window to press the ability again, and it's going to send me backwards. So I'll demonstrate that right now. I'm going to Fell Rush forward, and then so again, go right back. And you can see it did give me momentum for each use. And momentum caps at 30 seconds now. It doesn't cap out at 10 seconds, so you can really like stockpile your momentum it's great it's great and you're probably noticing that you know it's doing damage each time too does damage forward does damage backwards and so yeah it feels really good to, to press it's not clunky and I, I was saying this on stream earlier it's like the one downside is that you can't do two fell rushes back to back right you can't double fell rush but what you can do if you think about it for a lot of situations like say uh we're talking about taros in vault of the incarnates right you're doing mythic, you guys, you're all stacked up in your group, you get the big swirly underneath you, you're gonna fell rush sideways, and then once the swirly's gone, you're gonna go back, right? And that's okay, that's kind of what you're doing. You, you still kind of, you, you get that second fell rush in your back-to-back -back fell rushes, but you just have to make sure it's okay to go back to where you came from. A lot of the times it is okay. So by taking this talent, realistically, you're getting double the amount of fell rushes. It's just two of those four fell rushes that you're getting are just limited in their direction. The good thing is like you get you get momentum from from all of them. Look, I just stacked up 20 seconds of momentum right there. So, yeah, super cool talent. I like it. I don't know if it's going to be the play all the time, but it it, it is a, it's a lot of fun to press. If you guys can get on PTR and play around with it, you you definitely should. I highly recommend it. Then we have this choice note here. I mentioned it in the previous video, but uh, it's a choice note. You get deflecting dance 
You deflect incoming attacks while blade dancing, absorbing damage up to 15% of your maximum health. Insanely cool, insanely fun. Love that we have blade dance dodge back essentially, but it's not dodge, it's 15% of your maximum health. Super cool. Or the other option is mortal dance. So if you're doing a fight like Sarkareth where you need that healing reduction or you're doing PvP, you can take this. Uh, next we have Scars of Suffering. Increased versatility by 4% and reduces threat by 8%. So good. Free 4% verse. Insane. Insane. I should have this right now. I don't know. I don't know. This build is weird. Um, they, hey, this is a big upgrade, okay? They changed the icon for Looks Can Kill. Before, Furious Gaze and Looks Can Kill had the exact same purple scary face icon. They, they changed that. They changed that. Looks Can Kill has its own icon now. Going down further, we have Momentum and Inertia. I explained this in my last video, but Inertia is now, um, it's a more impactful buff that you can give yourself, but less frequently than Momentum. So momentum, you can just kind of keep up all the time, especially now. And inertia, when empowered by Unbound Chaos, Felrush increases your damage done by 20%. I'll go over here, I'll press Immolation Aura, I'll get an Unbound Chaos charge, and then when I spend it, I get inertia. 20% increased damage compared to uh, 6%. But you're only getting this as often as you can use Immolation Aura, basically. Whereas this, you get it as often as you can Felrush. Let's go, all this is kind of the same. Glaive Tempest got buffed. The previous build is still, is still the same in this build. Uh, Soul Rend got moved. Soul Rend used to be over here, but now it's over here. So you can access Soul Rend through Serrated Glaive or through Inner Demon. Um, but now we have this talent, Chaotic Disposition. Each time you deal Chaos damage, there is a 7.77% chance to duplicate 33% of the damage up to 7 total times. People have crunched the numbers on this and there are some diminishing returns. Um, so the one point into this, doesn't change like any of the numbers all it does is increase um up to how many total times it can happen so the, f the first point is up to three times second the second point is up to seven but there's dr past five so it's a little weird and you do need to spend two points in this node here to be able to access a fire inside but let me just demonstrate what it does for you just do some damage i don't know what i'm doing pressing buttons yep you're just pressing buttons blah 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 yeah, doing some chaos damage. Cool. Chaotic disposition. This is just free damage. Literally, literally just free damage. From all of your abilities that do chaos damage, they have a chance to replicate it for free. It's just passive. And so if I were to stand there and actually do my rotation properly for a solid few minutes, chaotic disposition would be top damage. I can promise you it would be top damage by like a ton it'd be doing more than immolation aura right now it'd be doing like 18 20 percent so this talent is extremely powerful i do suspect that they're going to nerf it just a little bit which to me is okay I'm, I'm fine with that i think it is a little overpowered and it is kind of a talent that you just have to take anyways if you want to get to any means necessary and to fire inside so it, it's a good tuning knob if either of these talents aren't really performing up to snuff they can use this as their tuning knob instead of like functionally changing how both of these work, if that makes sense. So I, I think, yes, this is probably going to get nerfed a little bit and it's gonna be okay. Now let's look at a fire inside. This one's fun. We couldn't test this last time because if you took this talent, it would just completely brick your immolation aura, but it does work now. And there's a lot of cool things we can look at here. A lot of cool interactions. Immolation aura has one additional charge and 30% chance to refund a charge when used. You can have multiple immolation auras active at a time. What would it mean to have multiple immolation auras? What does that do? So if we have multiple immolation auras, there are different instances of immo, right? Different dots. Each of them is going to have their own growing inferno stack. Each of them is going to be affected by burning wound separately. Each of them is going to have their own rage fire. So you're going to have multiple rage fire dots loaded on your character that will then eventually explode, potentially at different times. Each time you get an immolation aura buff on you, that's going to be proccing Unbound Chaos. Now, you can't have multiple Unbound Chaos charges banked. You have to use it before you can get another one. What else? What else? What else? Uh, Immolation Aura. It's going to be converted to Chaos Damage, obviously, through any means necessary. So that's getting empowered by your ma by your mastery, right? It's going to do a lot of Chaos Damage. Aura of Pain increases the critical strike chance of Immolation Aura by 6%. You know, each of those separate Immolation Aura buffs that you have are getting that buff. Now, here's something else. Check this out. I'm going to take, where, where can I do this? Let's see. Uh, I'll take, uh, 
let's I'll just take points out of this just to demonstrate. I don't know what the actual build would be, but let's put two points into Inferno Armor. Immolation Aura increases your armor by 20% and causes melee attackers to suffer chaos damage. Whatever. But Immolation Aura increases your armor by 20%. What if you had two Immolation Auras? That's going to increase your, your armor by 40%. What if you had three Immolation Auras? That's going to increase your armor by 60%. What if you had four Immolation Auras? You see what I'm getting at here, right? Now, if we look over here, Burning Hatred, Immolation Aura generates an additional 50 Fury over 10 seconds. Each Immolation Aura you have is generating its own Fury. That's that's a lot of incoming Fury, especially if they're staggered, right? Let's see what I can do here. I just want to... Anything you see here is not going to be the build or anything even close to what a real build should look like. I'm just kind of putting points in places just so you can... So I can demonstrate certain things. Um... But this is probably not a build you would play. Oh, also, Isolated Prey, Immolation Aura always critically strikes. So you have four uh, Immolation Aura buffs on you. They're just always critic. Let's come over here to the target dummies. You'll see my Immolation Aura now has two next to it. That means it has two charges. And there's something weird with Immolation Aura right now where basically doesn't have a GCD. It has a cooldown that's hasted, but if you press it, there is nothing stopping you from pressing Immolation Aura again immediately so if you're getting procs right if you're getting that 30 percent chance to refund a charge when used you can just slam up to like multiple multiple mul multiple immolation auras so let's see i'm gonna so you can see here i have three immolation auras rolling they're all generating fury i'm gonna see if i can get a, a really good set of procs for you guys there we go. We got one, two, three, four Immolation Auras rolling. Each with their own Rage Fire. And now, remember that armor talent that I was showing you? Okay, hey, check this out. Okay, here we go. So watch my armor. My baseline armor is 4183. We're going to use one charge. It's up to 5k. Another charge up to 6k. Now, if we got another proc, that'd go up to like 7k. So you're just naturally just increasing your armor. It's super cool. This is exciting to me. I, I like all these neat little interactions. So yeah, that's uh pretty much all we can go over now. There likely is going to be more tuning happening. Oh, I just went backwards. See there, I tried to do two fell rushes back to back and it sent me backwards. That'll be something I definitely have to get used to. Um, So yeah, that's everything we can look at right now. Changes to the tier set have not been implemented yet. Uh, they're not quite in the game yet, but they'll be, uh, I think, getting pushed probably tomorrow or something. And yeah, I'm going to keep you guys updated with builds as we learn about them. We, again, I don't want to give you guys any false information yet when it comes to builds because things are going to be changing. Um, talents are going to be shifting, but it's starting to seem a bit more clear that they're... Listen, I don't want to get your hopes up, okay? I don't want to get your hopes up, but talking with some people... And it seems highly likely that there is going to be a competitive no mover build. And when I say no mover, I mean no initiative, no fell rushing, no momentum, no inertia, no VRing. The, the pathway is there. The building blocks are there to have a competitive, completely no mover build where you can just plant and blast. I know a lot of you are, are, are excited to hear that. And as we know more, as we sort of figure these things out, I'm going to keep you guys posted. So again, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I will also be making deep dive videos on each of these new talents. I have a, a video planned for a fire inside. I have a video planned for chaotic disposition and all the different like little things that, that work together with it. And if you guys haven't seen this, I made a video on rage fire, a deep dive video explaining how rage fire works exactly, because it's kind of a mystery. It's kind of this weird like puzzle on how it all fits together because like the range fire explosion itself is not uncapped but immolation aura is capped but it's soft capped listen if you want to learn how rage fire works make sure you watch this video up here in the top right i watched it myself the other day and i was like damn i used to be smart what happened anyways go watch the video make sure you give this video a like subscribe to the youtube channel and i'll, I'll see you guys again very very soon all right peace